Excellent. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I think you do a great job with, with the motivation and mindset. And um, um, I'm looking forward to answer some questions for you and, and the rest of the country. Let's start my video. Absolutely. Can we see you here? I don't know. I'm having a little bit of a... How's that? Here we go. You got me? Gotcha. All right. I can't see me. Oh, there you go. I've been running around a lot, Gene, so I'm glad to be here, and I'm, I'm glad to help you guys out. Um, let's get to some topics and, and see how I can, I can help the program. How um, I guess your, your transition from college coaching or from, from being a competitor in college to coaching. Yeah, you know, being at the University of Michigan was, um, was a pleasure. It was something that helped me develop myself and figure out the person I wanted to be and how wrestling was going to help me in the rest of my life. I always knew that I wanted to be part of wrestling and teach wrestling and the education of wrestling. Um, and that's why we started Apex Wrestling back in 2002. Once I graduated college, um, it was a time when, you know, after 9-11, uh, the world was like it is today in turmoil and upside down. And, you know, wrestling club was a great way to get some kids uh, together and teach the, the system of technique and the education of the sport of wrestling. So from there, it kind of extended itself into a couple different locations and different schools. And um, it's developed into what it is today. You know, um, today we have four locations uh, through the state of New Jersey. Uh, my spark, uh, my um, business partner is uh, Corey Cooperman, who's doing a phenomenal job. Once I took the role of being an athletic director at St. Joseph Regional, you know, it took a lot of time away from me being on the mat. And we had already developed a very good school and we had a good system and there was no better person to add than Corey Cooperman. I mean, he's doing such a great job that together we're just teaching the, the education and the, the, the sport of wrestling and, and we're getting kids into, you know, they're getting better, they're developing and they're, and they're getting into very good colleges, you know? And I think that's what it's about, trying to relate the sport of wrestling to some of the things we're gonna face in life. Absolutely. Now talk about, you just said there about the word having a systematic program. A lot of people just throw that around. I've been to your club many times and I've, and I've seen up on the wall that your system of wrestling and it's broken down very detailed by position. How did you put that together? What were your, some of your inspirations there? Yeah, well, if I rewind a little bit, growing up in grammar school, you know, I was part of a, a system very similar to the one that we teach today. Um, I was part of the Edge School of Wrestling, and for all of you that know Ernie Monaco, Ernie used to have a, uh, a board that would have all of the techniques and positions that we were to be going over that day in practice, and then depending on what videos we were watching or what area we were following, we would revert back to the, the, the board so that we knew you know, the areas in it that we wanted to compete in and get better in. So over the years, I, I've ever done and things like that, I've saved it. You know, everyone knows that the sport of wrestling, it's an educational process. So you learn and develop through time. So over time, when you're learning and developing in the areas that, you know, help you, you can then understand how they can help other people based on their style. So that's why we use those boards. That's why we use those areas. They're also the most frequent areas wrestled in. I mean, when you break down matches and you break down scoring positions, those are the areas where you know, happen. So we want kids uh, to be, you know, understand the position so it's not foreign to them. I can't hear you, Gene. Oh, there was, I, I was. Oh, there you go. All right. So now, right. you were thinking about a lot while you were competing, were you able to turn it off while you were, like, I guess you have to remain, remember certain little points. You don't want to be thinking about the whole system while you're competing, but I'm sure it could, pull you right back to where you need to be. You know, as a coach, when you see kids going through different, you know, matches or, or competing, you know, it, it, it reflects or it rec you recollect being in those positions, whether it's down by a point or ways to approach a match or ways to approach a period, you know, so reverting from being a wrestler to a coach, 
um, is something where I guess as a wrestler, it's all about you and what you need to do to be competitive. When you're a coach, you have to look at kids and kind of see, you know, what positions you feel they may be good in and then be artsy around building a program for them so that they can be successful and see success. But it's not an easy transition. I don't think a lot of people can make that transition um, or, or it's as easy for some than it is for others. But, you know, uh, for me, it was pretty, it was, it was pretty easy. I knew I was coached real well growing up in youth um, and I had a great coaches. So I was able to use that to figure out how to coach other kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And speaking about coaching other kids, Rutgers is two NCAA champions, Nick Suriano and Anthony Ashnault. What do they have in common? Apex School of Wrestling. Talk about them growing up and how you're able to have that impact on them and what you feel like they've learned from you. Okay, we'll start with Nick Suriano. Um, Nick was a very, very dedicated young man from a very dedicated, good family. I mean, I started with Nick when he was probably in the second grade, weighing in the 50s. And he had wrestled for a year, but, you know, was just getting into it, you know, starting to feel success. Into, you know, the system. What are you going to do for my kid? Or what can you do for my child? And he was probably the most dedicated, or I should say one of the most dedicated kids. I mean, you know, wrestling is class time and it's private lesson time. Um, the Serrano family was very consistent week in and week out, all through grammar school and into high school. And his dedication, hard work, uh, he, you know, just the way he perseveres, his attitude toward the sport of wrestling, you know, you're always in it to get better. So as much as I coached him and helped him develop, he brought something to the table that was unique for a young kid and from his focus to his competitive edge and attitude. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a push and pull, you know, I provided something, but they came providing, you know, just as much. And, and that's why he was so successful. But through his years, you know, we traveled, we went to those Tulsa, Oklahoma events and we traveled to Pittsburgh one time to wrestle some guys um, you know, it was always about trying to find the best competition and, and give the kid some, you know, a, a good feel for the sport of wrestling. I mean, he always had goals. He was always goal oriented. So, you know, it's like there's some kids when when you're teaching them, you say this position needs to stay in this area. He's the kid that's going to do that and not look back. It's not like you have to go through an area so that, you know, he was always ready to play the game. He was ready to practice. He was always prepared. He was always trying to get better. And he consistently does it today. And that's why he is the person that he is. So, I mean, he was a pleasure to coach. He's a pleasure to help, you know, um, and he did come through the system. He did an excellent job. And I'm sure one day he's going to be a spectacular coach. Um, Anthony Ashnall, um, he, the same thing. You know, I started seeing Anthony around the fifth grade a little bit later um, when we were in Kenilworth. Um, he was also very dedicated, um, always wanted to get better, had very good goal-oriented family, and he was goal-oriented to the point where we knew Super 32s were big events for him, and we were planning on going to those events and doing well. You know, he, was, he had great goals for himself. He knew he wanted to be a national champ when he was in high school. You know, these guys knew, you know, that they were probably trying to be – you know, records that I've had being a four-time finalist or a three-time champ, these guys came through and just swept, swept it. They did an excellent job for the state of New Jersey. You know, they were, you know, fan-based. Everyone loves the, the Soriano and Nationals, you know, and, and, and they develop. And again, he's another guy. These guys have high goals and a high standard for where they're going to compete and what they're about to do because we're still wrestling, right? But they're also going to be amazing coaches. So it was a pleasure to be with those guys. Absolutely. You know, I remember when Flow Wrestling first came out, and I think you were opening your first location, it probably was, and you were speaking about wrestling being such a holistic sport. Not only was there the training facility to wrestle, but also the, the strength training. And at, at all of your locations, there, there'd be a, 
maybe a nutritionist or a chiropractor. Um, I remember you when we when we first spoke about bringing in mindset, you said you think that a lot of these kids just need someone to talk to. So in other words, you're looking at the holistic, the big picture, you know, the, about the wrestler. So that, I think that's a huge thing. Can you talk about that a little bit, making sure you tackle all those different domains? Yeah. You know, the average coach out there or a club coach might just teach a kid how to wrestle and how to, you know, build on technique and how to be successful in wrestling matches. That's all good, you know, but in reference to getting the edge, similar to what you guys do with mental mindset, you know, and, and motivation, that's an area that you need to practice. Um, strength training is an area you need to practice. Um, match strategies are an area you need to practice. So what, what we, we, we always try to do is we're trying to build a balanced with building a balanced athlete, you know, you have to have some strength training. You have to be doing some road work and have some good running and, and, and endurance. You have to have a good technique. You have to have match strategy and you have to be focused What you know, you have to understand, you know, your motivation and your mindset. Now, those are all the things that the best athletes in the world do. And it's important to be balanced in our sport so that kids can figure out how to be balanced outside the sport and their everyday life, whether it be home or, or their religion or, or their, or their job and things like that. So these things are important. You know, it is the edge. It's the something that we do, you know um, you know, the big thing now is film study, understanding what you're doing, how you're wrestling, doing that with a kid, giving them the right information. I know my partner, Corey Cooperman did a, like a, he had like a virtual web-based, um, similar to what we're doing here, Zoom stuff for kids. They were watching videos from the best wrestlers across the world. And he was relating those videos to their techniques, the things they do, combining mindset with it. Now that kind of stuff is hard to come by. You don't have coaches that do that. I mean, our college coaches do, but to be recreational middle school high school coaches that do that it's kind of hard it's it's hard to find but those were the things that we needed to succeed when we were kids when we were in college so you know when you've been through it and if you've done it then you know kind of how to teach it or present it uh, to these youth kids absolutely and you're getting these kids so young so you're you're seeing their growth and their development right through you got a guy like an Anthony Ashnell, Nick Suriano, two different personalities and all the other different kids at the club. How do you steer them in a direction that, yes, there is a system, but you're also making sure that you're, you're answering the call of each individual's differences? You know, like you just hit it on the head, you know, everyone's different. Most kids are different. And those young men were very unique. They fall into unique categories. You know, you have to really get to know the people. I mean, it's, it's, it, you have to know the families, you have to get to know the kids, you have to get to know the way they were brought up and the way the family orientation is. Um, that stuff's very important. And the dedication is important. When a family is dedicated to understand what the game plan is, it's not for today or to win a rec tournament or to be a champ today at a young age. We're developing for the future. And I think by putting stock into the future, I think that's why our success rate and how many kids are getting into the right schools, you know, that's why that success rate is there. We're not really focusing on, I mean, we are focusing on the now, don't get me wrong, but there's an overall goal setting process that, you know, each person kind of falls into a different category, you know, into a particular category. And, you know, once you figure out the people that you're working with, you kind of stir them in the right direction or in the direction that you feel in your RC way of being a coach and, and make it happen, you know? Yeah. Right. right. Let's talk a little bit about building the wrestling club. Okay. So obviously wrestling clubs, they definitely during this time, you know, struggling, but it's difficult enough to get one wrestling club going. You've been able to get multiple wrestling clubs going. So talk a little bit about that, the development. We, did you always envision multiple locations or were you thinking more, one and then it just kind of built out organically yeah um well we started in 2002 with a smaller club called you know apex wrestling it was in south hackensack on the second floor um, of a of a building industrial area 
what happened from there is we wound up in a larger facility because uh, we, we needed more space. And then we wound up with an extreme amount of space at the premier location, which was in uh, Saddlebrook, New Jersey. That location grew to the point where we have had 500 plus members at one time. And I had to start hiring a lot of coaches. And that's when I hired Foley Dowd, uh, Eric Norgard, Dane Tabano, and some others, uh, just because there were so much, um, there were so many kids. But what we found was there were people coming from uh, far, far distances to get our, to get the technique and to get our plan. It was just that um, we weren't able to really uh, tend to everyone well enough. There were just too many kids. So we started to branch off and have different locations throughout New Jersey so that a, it was closer for people to get to, but B, it makes the club a bit more personalized. So, you know, once we made one model, it was pretty easy to do some others. And, and you know, um, once, that, once that happened, it, it gave us that, uh, that web umbrella that we were looking to have, which helps us when we, when we make teams and travel and things like that to uh, compete, you know, in the, state, in the state as well as outside of the state. Yeah, and also thinking about how you've how you've always had different people around, whether it be a nutritionist, strength, chiropractor. That, that's important, I would think, also from a business perspective, because now um, just brings in more revenue. Yeah, you know, this is a business. It's I mean, hard. Yeah, it's a business, and and that's what I went to school for. It's it's management, you know, um, it, and. It's one thing to look at a school and say, okay, I'm going to have a wrestling school and I'm going to do my business model to make ends meet. It's another thing to say that I'm going to have a wrestling school as a market segment and then I'm going to have other market segments from gear to um, maybe jujitsu or to strength and conditioning and to chiropractic or nutrition. Those are all different market segments that you can be part of the program or you are wrestling program, or maybe you just kind of come in and fish into our nutrition or other areas. So it's just part of the business model. You know, it's important in today's economy to, to make sure you're trying to make ends meet. So, you know, having other things is important. I mean, now we have this uh, new um, um, apex Academy, which is a, an academy where kids can come and do their repeat eighth grade before they go to their schools like Del Barton, Bergen, Joe's, Bosco, or anywhere else they're looking to go in their public schools. I think a lot of parents now are kind of, um, they're kind of set back because they're not sure what the school is going to be doing in September. And, and I'm bringing that up just because it's another market segment that is very important that you can run from a school like Apex Wrestling. Absolutely. That was a big reason why we wanted you to come in for this because um, we really respect you. We really respect your opinion. And this information isn't really out there. And a lot of times we're not trained to think like this unless we went to school for business. And also having a little bit of a knack for it and some experience like you have. Talk a little bit more about the model. What would be your recommendation for a coach maybe starting small if they wanted to start a club? And then how would you build that out? You know, you broke up in the beginning of your question. Do you mind repeating it? Yeah. Well, first, just saying we're having you, you know, we, we love having you on. We really respect your... I can your, appreciate that. Good. Breaking up? I can appreciate that. I heard that part. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, and just your knowledge of business and wrestling. And a lot of times in wrestling, maybe we just have one or the other, maybe not both. And you've been able to put it together. So, and I think there's a lot of coaches out there that are really curious how you did that and what might be some small steps. You spoke about having a model and then multiple streams of revenue. Really, really break that down for what would be some of your recommendations for a coach maybe to get started small and to branch out? Well, I'd recommend you come to Apex Wrestling. Right. <laughs> um, no, you know, it, it's the one challenge with any business is having a location, right? So you can easily rent a place, put mats in it, you know, have that expense and then run the business. 
But I think if people are starting small in, in, in reference to what's going on in today's society, it's probably a good idea to start small where you're either renting from um, maybe a, a local school or doing something locally in your town where you can have some mat space. It's not something that you have to put a lot of money into. You're more or less putting your time into it to build it. So if anyone is looking to start a wrestling school across the country, you know, it's good to have a plan. It's good to have a model and it's good to start small in a sense where you do it like locally in your town before you go and pick up a large space um, to rent just because it changes everything when you start looking at your overhead, your rent, your lights, your electric, all, all that stuff starts to add up. Um, and you know, if, if we have ups and downs or high season and low season based on the wrestling season and out of season, you know, it can be quite difficult. But if you start small and, and, and you have a space that's you can get work done in, you're actually providing more and doing more by giving back and educating and teaching the sport of wrestling. And I think that's probably the best way to start. So maybe starting at a local high school that will have yeah. you exactly uh, uh, where they would have you and you can kind of come in and provide for the community and provide for that high school you know um, it's a bit difficult today because every high school in town or area obviously things that happen in new jersey and the way you would rent something or go about starting something small would be different than if we were like in the midwest like michigan missouri or wisconsin but um, the other way that might be a good idea would be to combine with someone who's like a gym that uh, already has um, a market segment of strength conditioning. And then you kind of come in as a small renter with not much overhead to get some mat space. And then you kind of use the gym as, you know, a way to, you know, have the kids come in and be part of the gym and be a market segment of the gym. Um, those are some good ideas, you know, um, to start at a smaller rate, you know. Yeah, I guess I always wonder about the pros versus the cons in terms of maybe if there's a, if there's a local high school that has a wrestling room, they'll have you in. And maybe you give, do you, would you recommend maybe you give a discount to their wrestlers or you give it to them? For yeah, you know, that's, that's all in your business model, you know, depending on what they charge you or what overhead is you know but you know it's it's one of those things where you wouldn't have to charge as much if you didn't have as much overhead you know what I mean you really wouldn't have to do that you know um, and then you're back into doing what you love to do and that's teaching the sport of wrestling you know um, also a smaller place gives you the opportunity to have smaller groups you know what I mean like in today's world you know, with COVID, it, you know, everything right now is just sh has shrunk into making sure it's in smaller groups and pods, right? Um, so a place to do private lessons where you could screen people daily and things like that would probably be the best thing for now. I'm following the government order and, and what NJ.gov puts out for, for, for camps and youth sports, you know. I'm I'm in between like youth sports stuff right now and NJSIAA, so you know I'm studying both. Um, but for for clubs, it would be you know uh, similar to the smaller groups and pods that the government's asking us to do right now. Okay, and what would be some good tips with for wrestlers who maybe have no business experience? on how they could start, what resources would they look to for how to start a model, how to create a business plan? Any ideas that you have with that for what someone who has no business sense? No business savvy, protect yourself, um, to make sure you set up a limited liability company, make sure that you, know, you have a location, your insurance is correct, Know, we have good and then there's also like um you know nhsca has insurance there's a couple of different programs out there that have uh, insurance for clubs coaches and your location one of the things that i would focus on and that's different in every
insurance. We might have some technical difficulties right now. Let's see if Coach Logan jumps back in. But again, a tremendous topic because a lot of coaches are interested in starting a wrestling club, but they just don't have the, have the know-how on how to do this. So it's just very important that we, that we think about it. And anytime you could learn from someone who's had this kind of success before, it goes a long way. Coach, I'll see you again. Damon, you got me? Just jump in if, you, if you're ready to go, whenever. <laughs> yes. We're getting closer, we're getting warmer. Me or you? Your end or my end? Uh, I, I have full service. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Whichever. So as you were saying, make sure you get insurance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a way to understand the way different insurances work. You know, um, again, it's different. Uh, we might have lost you again. And I see myself and don't know anything else. What's going on here? You're muted now. How about now? I'm. Um, um, I can't hear Not nothing. Can. Now I can. It's like going in and out. So I don't. Okay. All right. So we, got the, we got the insurance. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I don't. What comes, what comes after insurance in terms of having a business plan? How, and then how do you expand? And then quality controls. Because you have multiple coaches there. How do you make sure? That's always the toughest thing, replicating yourself, right? Which obviously can't be done, but you get people who are good enough. Yeah, you have to pick the right people. You know, you have to get into understanding who's with you. You know, um, I mentioned Dane Tabano. He's a guy that wrestled through the Edge School of Wrestling. and was also a University of Michigan graduate. Foley Dowd, same thing, was Petty School of Wrestling, was a Michigan graduate. You know, he was also an edge guy. Um, Eric Norgard was an edge guy, and, you know, and he was also Columbia University. And now Corey Cooperman, you know, he was an edge guy, you know, also worked, I believe, with Peak. But he was, you know, he's an edge guy who understands. He was taught the right way. And these are the same guys that I want teaching my kids, you know. So, you know, it's not easy to bring in – you have to find the right people that have our model. You know what I mean? Everyone learns the sport a different way. And, and there's a lot of different ways to teach the sport of wrestling, but w we like our way, you know what I mean? And, and our way works for us. You know, we do the best we can to give back and, and to get kids to the next step. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, as the coach gets his club started up, how do you start the initial promotion? Is it more social media? Is it more running a camp? It, yeah. yeah, it it was different when we first started, right? Uh, in 2000, you know, lots have evolved uh, since 2002. It used to be newspaper ads, magazine ads, and you would pay monthly to, and you'd make like a, a flyer and you'd have it out. You can also have flyers and, and, and material at wrestling tournaments. 
where you set up a table and you kind of promote who you are, what you do and how you do it with some contact information. You can make t-shirts that have your information on them, which is an investment in marketing. You can do now today, it's different social media. You can, you know, Facebook platforms, you know, different platforms for social media, Twitter posts, things like that. Instagram. It's different today. So I think it's more or less being up on the times as things develop and kind of, um, you know, evolve with the times when it comes to how to promote yourself. Um, but those are the typical uh, everyday ways that you, you would do things. You can also get involved in your community. Um, and, and when it has like youth sports in each community, you can get involved in youth sports and put posts on, on local things like that. Okay. And then now how about getting in with local teams? Obviously I think about Kenilworth yeah. Like the whole Cranford wrestling team was there. All the yeah. prep was there. Of course, it could be a little bit. You have a couple great guys go there, and then everyone follows. Or do you go to the school, or is it a little bit both? I think the best thing to do is to get involved in the youth programs in, the, in that particular town or surrounding towns of your gym. Let them know ahead of time that you're interested in coming into your, the area and you would like to be involved in their recreational program, whether you do free clinics or you know, invite kids to come to the gym in, in groups um, or maybe run a camp for that uh, town at your gym or vice versa. Maybe you're a gym owner and you're gonna go to a club like Cranford or Paramus to, um, to run something for them. And when you market, you're, that's marketing yourself. See, it's not, not like you're going in there and you're asking for, payment but you're going in there to market yourself market your club teach a little bit get to know some people and start that networking uh, process excellent a lot of great information a lot of very practical information that uh, unfortunately you really don't hear a lot about in the wrestling community yeah. and it's important because a lot of coaches aspire to have their own club and they just don't know what to do they just don't know how to begin so we really appreciate it's it it's a tough time now though now it's a tough time you know, so you got to be very careful what you're doing and, and how you're presenting your club. See, um, because you, again, like I want to bring up the the, the, the the local state governments, because at right now, starting a club would be very difficult. Maintaining a club is difficult right now. You know, um, maintaining sports in general for youth in high school is very difficult right now. So, um you know, it's, it's one of those things where you have to set some goals. You might have to take your time right now and be patient, you know. Um, and truthfully, anyone who's interested in doing anything like this can always give me an email and I'll help them in any way. It's, it, the format's not that difficult. And it might vary based on where you're from, and what state you're in. So, I mean, the information, I know we built our own model, but it can be modeled in many other states. Well, thank you for that offer. And coaches, if, if you're serious about that, Coach Damian Logan is an excellent resource. He knows what he's talking about. He's got a great mind for this. He's been doing it for a long time. So it's, it's the perfect storm of talent and hard work. So thank you very much. Coach Damian Logan, appreciate all you do. Thanks a lot, Gene. You guys are the best. Keep doing what you're doing and helping the sport of wrestling. You guys are changing the sport forever. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. God bless you. We'll see you.